Hello, I'm Michael Diamond, and you're watching Muscle Central. Okay, this video, I'll be talking about my favorite split. Uh, it's a five-day split. I'm not going to take credit for this. Uh, I picked it up from uh, Iron Man magazine. It's part of the critical mass approach to training, and but I found that when I used it during the four years I was competing, it to be very, very effective. Okay, you're co covering the whole body over a five-day period. My preference was Monday through Friday, I was, I was lifting, and I took Saturday and Sunday off. So it's five days on, two days off. But depending on your individu individual schedule, that might not work. You might do two days on, one day off, three days on, one day off, and then repeat. Maybe three days on, one day off, two days on, one day off, and repeat. Whatever suits your schedule the best. Now, let's get to the meat and potatoes of it. You got three biggest body parts. You got the chest, back, and, and the legs. The idea is now, okay, the chest, for example, you can't uh, isolate the upper chest or the lower chest from the lowest portion of the chest. But what you can do by depending on the angle on which you're working, you can put more emphasis on the upper or lower portion. And, okay, now let's say you're in the gym, you're doing your chest workout. You start off doing your heavy inclines, uh, and then you do your other upper chest movements. Then after you finish that, you move on to working the lowest, the lower portion. What if you put out a very intense effort and really gave it your all during that portion of workout? By the time you're ready to do the Flat benches, you might be giving as much of an effort as you have left in you, but you're not giving as much as you could have because your body has already drained quite a bit from the first half of the workout. So the idea is now we're going to do that, do those big body parts in two separate workouts. You do you work you emphasize the upper chest in one workout, and you're gonna emphasize the lower portion in, in a separate workout. Same thing goes for the back. Uh, you you, uh, you got the the mid back and you got the last. The mid back is the tra the muscles uh, from the traps running down to the lumbar, and the lats are the muscle that run alongside along the sides of the body from the armpit down the side of the body. How low they run basically depends on your genetics. Kai Green, his lats run from his armpits down to his waist. Someone like Dennis Wolf, they ran from his armpits down to the halfway down. It all depends on how your muscles tie it in. But what we do is we're going to work that those muscles separately also. Uh, for the most part, to work the mid back, all the it's it's your rowing motions, uh, and a, and a pulling like, pulling motion like the deadlift. Uh, they're going to work those primarily hit the muscles from the traps down to the lower back. Sure, the lats are going to be worked, but not the emphasis is not going to be on the lats. It's going to be on the on the mid-back from the traps down to the lumbar. So you got your deadlifts and you got your rows, your various uh, type of rowing movements. Let's say you're doing those, that part of your back first. Once you get finished doing heavy deadlifts, and uh, 
heavy rows and, and whatever other work you're doing for the mid back, you start to work the lats, which are any movement where the arm goes, when the hand arms go from above your head down, a pull down movement, whether it's a pull up, pull down, or a pull over, you'll primarily work in the lats. So now after you finish uh, those heavy rows and deadlifts, you're not going to have the same energy to do the 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 pull down movements with the same type of intensity. So we're going to break that down into two separate workouts. Legs. Uh, you get finished with a with a good squat session. You barely want to do your leg extensions or whatever, whatever other exercises you have planned for your quads. So after you finish doing uh, all your quad work and those heavy squats, you're going to be too spent to really get a good, strong, solid effort into your hamstring work. Uh, so, once again, we're going to break those down into two separate workouts. This is the way I break it down. On day one, first day, for first day, first workout, is going to be the lower section of the chest and the shoulders. Day two, second workout, you're going to be working the lats and the hamstrings. Day three, the third workout, will be the upper chest and the triceps. Day four, the fourth workout, you're going to be working, doing squats. Uh, I'm sorry, your quads, which hopefully you're doing squats. Uh and uh, the calf muscles. The fifth day, the fifth workout, you're going to be working the mid-back and the biceps. All your rowing motions and your bicep work. And you can do your forearms after you finish the biceps. Me, personally, I've never done forearm work. Uh, I'm lucky enough to get enough stimulation from gripping to build my forearms where I don't need uh, to do any forearm work. That's me. Uh, you might not be in that situation, so you can do your forearms after you do your biceps. So that's the way it's broken down. Uh, you should give it a try and see how that works for you. See if you get better results like that. Uh, let me know what you think about what I've said in this video in the comment section below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please share and by all means subscribe. Uh, whoa, don't let me forget. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. This way, every time I put up a new video, you will be notified. Once again, this is Michael Diamond, and I'd like to thank you for watching Muscle Central.